So I moved from here to a full, I moved previously from my, my nascent theism to a full embrace of radical materialism and naturalism. And I found that the why, the why question that had been plaguing me and had initially caused me to accept on faith the belief in God was now satisfied by the innumerable answers to innumerable questions that provided by naturalism, by materialistic explanations. But you may be saying, okay, so materialism, we can agree, explains the way our world works, or we believe explains the way our world works in general. But what, is, what does it say about the universe? What can natural selection, evolution, reductionism tell us about the origins of things, the ultimate why question. Well, why is any of this the case? It can't. But I don't think that is, should be a concern for materialists or atheists, that naturalism ultimately cannot explain why we're here. But perhaps it's because we're asking the wrong question. Why is there anything rather than nothing? Why am I here rather than anyone? That's not the, that's not the, that's not the question that should be of immediate concern for us. And that's because it's, it, it seems to me that the question is ill-formed. The question is ill-formed in the fact that we are assuming a special position as existence in the universe by saying, why are we here? What is our place in the universe? And we assume we have a special existence because we are rational creatures who can contemplate such questions. And it seems like, well, why do we appear to be the only creatures capable of having this discussion or reflectively, act, reflectively um, reacting or responding to their own existence? And like Dustin said, like, you know, some, it, the tendency is to say, well, the universe just always has been, always is the way. The universe is eternal. There is no f pr primary cause or prime numeral prime mover or final cause. Um, and I'm not going to quarrel with that. I, that, is, that is exactly what I accept. I don't um, believe it is necessary for the universe to have a beginning or end. Um, but I don't see why it necessarily follows that, given that the universe is, like, if, if, you, if you are to say, Dustin, to accept that, OK, the universe may be infinite. It may have always been. Why, why, does, why would you even assert at that point that there needs to be some kind of emanation of that? Even if it's continuous, there has to be something, some kind of mind, some kind of consciousness bringing about the order that we do see. You, do, you want, do you want me to respond? Yeah, I do. No, well, no let's keep the responses okay. to the, the, the 10 minutes. Okay. Um, it, it just seems like if, if you are to accept that, if you have no problem with this view, like you, you can you can still say that a belief in God is tenable even if the universe is eternal. It is eternal. Why, why postulate an unnecessary existence at all? Because if the universe is eternal, it almost seems to say that everything is necessary because it is. It's not contingent on anything. If it is and always has been, it's necessary because it is. Um, and finally, the moral question. The the most common objection that people. <clears throat> People address when they come up to me is like, well, if if truly if we were to accept atheism, if we were to, to reject God, something great would be lost. Not only would um, religion and the comfort and all the the beauty and art that has resulted from religious institutions would um, <clears throat> be reduced in its glory, but also we would we would have lost the primary organ organizational and power structure in, that we have in this world. And I will agree that religion has been a great source of order and structure in society. But we have a new and I think more palatable system of organization, and that is the democratic republic that we live in, which is divorced of any um, <clears throat> tenacious belief in something beyond this world, in the supernatural, and instead reliant on the ideas and the common goodness of men and the ability to express those ideas and freely and really to assert your individuality 
and your purpose in the world. You don't have to appeal to some being but beyond you or beyond all of us to have purpose. The purpose is determined by you and by the free exchange of ideas. And to me, that's more of the morality I want. I want a morality that I consciously choose, that seems to come from within us, because we do seem to have an intuitive moral sense, that seems... I, I don't think it, it, it's, it's difficult to explain, to explain morality in terms of selection. You, you made a point about um, how, how do we have this concept of beliefs being right or wrong? How does the rightness of our belief, how does it congeal with the idea of being selected? Like, how can right ideas have been selected? Like, if, if evolution and natural selection is the basis of our moral intuitions, what, how, what, how, how can we truly say, strictly speaking, that something is right or wrong? Well, I, I suppose I don't have the same robust definition of right and wrong as you do. To me, right and wrong is ultimately reducible to what is advantageous, disadvantageous, fit or unfit. Now, this doesn't take any way, thing away from morality, because we still act in the, our best interest. And often, our best interest includes pleasing or not harming or doing good for other the, of those around us. So we still, we, still, um, we still capture altruism. We still capture this human morality that we value through selection. We still get that. We still get this concept of right and wrong. But the way you're framing is it is that right is some kind of, it's some kind of mystery. Like our, our, our senses, our, our intuitions about right and wrong, something is just right or just wrong. But I, I don't see why it, it cannot be reduced in saying that something is right because it has these advantages or it has the most utility because you, you do that anyway. You do that calculus when you reflect on your actions. That's the exact calculus, like why did I do something? Well, because I weighed the pros and cons. I mean, the calculus that... Morality, the calculus is always taking place, whether consciously or unconsciously. And it does seem ultimately reducible to what is advantageous and what is disadvantageous, and therefore we choose the things, selected to choose the things that are most productive to our continued existence. And I don't think that takes any of the loftiness away from morality. I, I think it, it just goes to show that our morality is preserved in our very nature as human beings. We are moral creatures, just in that we are ourselves, in that we, we are social creatures, and we have to navigate through this world successfully. So I, I don't think that morality is threatened by a rejection of a theistic belief. And so for that reason, I, I, if, if, if you're merely left with pragmatic... Con yes. Oh, if you're merely left with pragmatic considerations at the end of the day, that can be answered successfully and without loss, with lo loss of meaning... You know, a loss of a moral sense is we don't lose a moral sense by rejecting, rejecting a theistic belief, then <clears throat> I, simply, I, I simply see no reason just based on pragmatic concerns alone, like this belief gives me comfort, it would be, <clears throat> it would be too detrimental to my, myself and my ability to navigate through the world to reject this belief, therefore I should accept it as true. Well, on the individual level, that that gives you know, some people, okay, they can believe in God, but the question is, you know, beyond pragmatic considerations, do we have a reason? And the evidence of my personal experience when I look around the world and the fact that I have not felt any connection, it's not that I haven't opened myself up to it, but I have not had the personal experience of, of religious experience of feeling united with some power beyond me. And I think those, <clears throat> those experiences can be explained in terms of um, comparable experiences um, that we can trace back to um, <clears throat> something as, you know, not just wishful thinking, that's not what it's reducible to, but merely to um, the universal need for the answer to that why question. Now, just because we're, we're both grasping at the same question of why doesn't mean that the answer should fall back on something that is that ultimately just leads to further why questions. Um, and finally, uh, 
back, addressing the uh, critique of naturalism, the idea that our universe is fine-tuned and such, or that we live in a Goldilocks universe, essentially that we live in a universe that is just right for life. You know, the conditions are just right. Well, yeah, we, we clearly do. I mean, w w w what is your point about the, the universe? The universe is this way because we exist, right? It, couldn't it be possible that the universe could only be necessarily the universe is the way it is life has to come about it's not you know some that it doesn't have to be traced back to some kind of necessary um content, necessary existence that the, the whole universe itself can be necessary and that your characterization of the universe as contingent is false that's the way i would go to answer that um but i i know the idea that everything is necessary is kind of a controversial position so <clears throat> I won't suggest you believe that, but that that is an, an answer to your question. Um, yeah, I think that's all. <laughs>